Hello lovely people, welcome to my do thon TBR video. I've got my love spoon earrings in, I'm wearing my Celtic art jumper, let's go for it! do a thon is a readathon that I take part in every year. It is uh, named after Dewey Saint, which is St David, the patron saint of Wales. It happens every March. And the idea is just to read some Welsh books. They can be books by Welsh authors, books set in Wales, um, topics like rooted in Wales, like King Arthur mythos, all that kind of stuff. Um, I always have a really great time taking part. Uh, I'll link, as I always do, to uh, the woman who started it all down below. She runs a blog. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time, I'm just going to tell you about some books. So the first book that I'm planning to read for Dewey-thon is Neon Roses by Rachel Dawson. This is um, set in the Welsh Valleys in the 80s. Um, we follow someone who um, essentially she's gay, she is, uh, her older sister is like marrying a Thatcherite policeman um, and then LGSM, which is Lesbians and Gay Support the Miners, come to the valleys and I think her, her world starts to open up. So LGSM is a real organisation that really existed. It's founded by a group of people based in London who heard about the miners' strike and they decided to raise money for it. Uh, immortalised in the film Pride, amongst many other things, but um, I think it's a really interesting time in history and a really like interesting solidarity point between different communities. Um, and I think that there's a really strong 80s soundtrack in this book. Like I think a lot of 80s music is referenced and that kind of thing. So I think that sounds really fun. I'll go through some of the other books I have and then I'll sort of bring it home on sort of some of my more traditional reads that I tend to always do each year. Next up is Telling Tales by Patrons Ag Barbie. Um, Patrons Ag Barbie uh, was born in London but uh, she moved to Wales when she was about 12 I think. Um, Colwyn Bay if I'm remembering right. This sounds so interesting. This is like a contemporary retelling of the Canterbury Tales. Um, she's a poet that I, I, I've i known about for a little while but I've, I've always kind of been interested in exploring so um, and I, there's just something I really like about contemporary reworkings of like medieval things. I'm very into that so I'm really intrigued to see how this is going to go. Um, on a poetry note, I have more poems. These are The History of Wales and Twelve Poems by M. Wynne Thomas, illustrations by Ruth Jen Evans. Um, this is a selection of 12 poems from a variety of points in Welsh history. Some of them I have actually read before, a lot of them I haven't though, so I'm really intrigued to introduce myself to some new poets. And they have these really um, interesting illustrations that run throughout them as well, so this is going to be really cool. Um, and I also have The Hiding Place by Treza Azipardi. This is actually also counting for my Read the World project for Malta because um, it's a Maltese author, but she's writing about um, there was a very large Maltese population in Tiger Bay in Cardiff, which I didn't actually know about. And then this is um, set in the 1960s, and we're seeing the Cardiff of this time through the eyes of the younger daughter and what their experience is like as Maltese immigrants and all of that kind of thing. So I'm really intrigued by this one. My mum has lent me The Final Whistle by Nigel Owens. Um, Nigel Owens is a rugby referee. He's, he's famous for being um, the first out rugby referee. Um, he's also very funny. He does like stand up comedy in his in his side. Uh, I was gonna say side hustle. I was like, oh, I'm not a person who says that. Um, I have read his first autobiography, which was published. Oh, it was really. It was kind of bittersweet actually, because it was published at a time, and he he talks about his whole journey coming out, um, some very dark lows that he had in that journey, but then how much better it is now that he's there. Um, he talks about a lot of rugby stuff. And at that point, he kind of is talking in a way where it's like he sort of accepted like he's he's going to be lonely forever, but it's better to live as himself and all this. Whereas I know that now he has a lovely husband. They own a farm. He's got a lovely little life. So um, this is in the run up to his retirement, I believe. How I felt about the last one was that it wasn't the best written biography I've ever read, but it was enjoyable and fun because I like Nige. So I'm sort of hoping for the same. 
Um, now we go into the sort of traditional things I always do every Dewey Thon. One of those is that my partner always lends me a book because my partner, he uh, his, he didn't grow up in Wales, but some of his family is Welsh. He speaks Welsh. He did his Welsh qualification in 2023, level one, got 86%. What? Um, so he, he provides me with a lot of Welsh books just as time goes on. Um, this one is Dr. William Price, Wells' First Radical by Dean Powell, although I have already been caveated that uh, he would say that Yolo Morganig is the First Radical, who I read about for uh, Nonfiction November this year, so I'm just hoovering up all my Welsh radicals. Um, but yes, Chartist, surgeon, heretic, archdruid and pioneer in the legislation of cremation in the British Isles, Dr. William Price was undoubtedly one of the most flamboyant, romantic and eccentric characters in Welsh history. Um, he's a guy who I am familiar with a little bit because of my partner, but I actually, same with Yolan Organic, to be honest with you, both of them, I was like, I kind of know a little bit about you, but I'm looking forward to having that like really fleshed out a lot more. I also traditionally pick up Susan Cooper. Um, the last one of these I read was The Grey King, which was the first book in this series that actually was set in Wales. I can't even picking it up for like the last few dewey thons being like oh it's set in wales and every time it's not set in wales and then i read that one at christmas and it was and i was like finally we got there so this is a middle grade fantasy series i think it was originally published in like the 60s um it's very much like the dark is bad the light is good blah blah, blah. but there's something about how susan cooper writes that i just really like like she's so atmospheric i really enjoy that i am finally on the last book of this series book five silver on the tree i don't know if this one's going to be set in wales we might be back to being like cornwall or elsewhere but it is the last one in the series and as is traditional i will read it during dewey thon my final two books are two authors that i always read during dewey thon it's become a little bit of a tradition the first one is the little stranger by sarah waters i think this is probably set in the victorian era because a lot of sarah waters books are um, this one sounds like it's like this doctor is brought to this um, fancy ass Georgian house um, and are the, the mother, son and daughter are struggling to keep pace with the changing society, but are they haunted by something more sinister than a dying way of life? Um, and his story is about to become terrifyingly entwined with theirs. I love Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, one of my favourite books. I did not really enjoy, was it The Night Watch? I think can't remember didn't enjoy the one i read for dewey last year just i didn't hate it sarah waters is always good she writes really well it was just boring for me <laughs> but this one i like the sound of sinister i think it sounds really intriguing so excited and then finally we have jasper ford um I love Jasper Ford. I think I've read him for every Dewey-thon, you know? Um, again, he's not Welsh, but he moved to Wales and he's really adopted it as his own. And Wales usually has some sort of a element in his story. Like, books are either set in Wales or, in this series, um, it's like the Independent Republic of Wales and all of the people who are in charge are named Owen Glyndwr and all that kind of stuff. So there's some really fun Welsh detail in his books, as well as them being fun. Um, it's kind of sci-fi. Thursday Next is a literary detective. She can, like, read herself into books, which is something that not everyone can do, but this is a society that is very heavily influenced by books and, um, but also has so much going on. There's, like, a real political plotline that is to do with, like, corporations and the power that corporations have and all that, but it's also very silly and funny. Um, I always find it really hard to concisely sum up these books because there's like little loads of loads of plot threads and then you're just like, this is what this one's doing. <laughs> um, but this is the third book in the series. I have been really enjoying working my way through this. By this point, we've, we've really advanced with some of the reading yourself into books plot lines. We've really got this um, massive corporation, which is very much antagonistic towards Thursday. I'm, I'm intrigued because the Well of Lost Plots is referenced in the second book as like this, this dark place where lost books go and lost plots and all that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm intrigued by the role that that place is going to have in this book. That's it. That's everything I'm planning to read for Dewey-thon this year. I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on any of these or let me know what you're planning on reading. Um, people who usually take part in Dewey-thon include um, Bert and Sean from Pastori Time, Heather. I'll link, I'll link to them down below in case you fancy seeing what other people are reading and want to consume some lovely Dewey-thon content. As for me, I will go. <laughs>
I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you next time for something different.